Plane flying over. My goodness, I wish the planes would quit. They're just a circling around and around. Them planes interrupting my broadcast. Shh, boys, I ain't got time for this. Hey folks, Graham Sparkman with Graham Sparkman Music Production. It's time for a big music update. Most of you have probably been thinking or wondering, where in the world have I been? I've not been posting anything. I've not been coming out with any new music. Uh, at first, I thought I was going to do several updates and, and postings on like social media and such, but then I thought, I'll just try to consolidate all of that information into a short YouTube video. Plus, it gives you the benefit of actually hearing some sneak peeks into some of these projects that I'm currently working on. So if you go back a few months, you probably remember I came out with my children's jazz album, which if, if you've got kids and you're interested in hearing that album, I'll provide some links below. Then after that album was released, a few months later, I did some promotion for an older album, which is a Christmas album, because, you know, let's face it, uh, you only get once a year to promote a Christmas album, so I did a little bit of that for Nativity Fire. But then I have been radio silent for the last several months, so what have I been doing? Well, for the first time that I can pretty much ever remember, I am juggling producing not one, but two full-length albums that have absolutely nothing to do with each other. So I'm going to take just a few minutes to talk about both of those projects and, as I said before, give you some sneak peeks. Project number one is generically being referred to at the moment as The Ambient Project. Obviously, that's not going to be the title of the album when it gets released, so I try to let albums name themselves. I know that seems a little bit weird, but as the songs begin to take shape and the album itself begins to take structure, especially on a full-length album, the course of the album can change and that can ultimately affect the title. So I usually put a placeholder title and it's usually very generic in, in the beginning and that obviously gets changed at the time of the release. So ambient music is sort of a weird genre. There's not a lot of folks that are like hardcore into ambient. I mean, there's there there are those folks out there. They do exist, uh, but it's not like mainstream music. It's just about as far away as you could be from mainstream pop music. So what is it? Well, in its original form, ambient music was used uh, almost therapeutically. Brian Eno, who I used to listen to a little bit as a teenager in my early 20s, was a pioneer in this genre. And it was used in a, in a tranquil way to relax people that may be have anxiety. I think it was even used maybe in airports, in the overhead uh, playback systems of airports to kind of create a calming atmosphere. And that really is the target end goal of ambient music is to create an atmosphere around the listener. As ambient music evolved, um, you know, there's sort of different sub-genres within ambient music. You have, as I said before, tranquil ambient music meant to be very relaxing and soothing. And then you have dark ambient music, which can be haunting and cinematic. I've currently got about four songs uh, tracked for this album in rough stages of uh, various stages of completion. But let me tell y'all, I have been having an absolute blast with this project. Uh, it's tapping into a creative part of my brain that is on a deeper level than maybe any other project. Uh, I'll try to explain a little bit of this. So sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night to pee and I can't go back to sleep and I'm sort of between dreams. And it's usually in these moments that I'm either, I take time to pray or I'm having some sort of creative idea and I remember it in the morning and then I run into my studio after I drop my kids off at school and try to execute that idea. Uh, several weeks ago, I had this idea to take to, to go back through VHS tapes of when I was growing up and listen for sounds on those tapes that were captured that weren't necessarily intended to be recorded. So maybe between 
dialogue or when people were talking on the tape, there may have been some kind of background noise going on that could be worked into the context of this ambient project. So is ambient music just a random collection of sounds that are woven together? Maybe in the beginning stages, it seems to be that way. But when does it go from becoming just a collection of instrumental sounds to a song? Because let's face it, there's an absence of structure in ambient music. There's no or very little percussive elements. There is, a, in most cases, an absence of melody and even harmony. So when does it make that transition? When the sounds are greater than the sum of their parts and they're woven together in such a way to where, once again, it creates an atmosphere that transports the listener to another place, so to speak, then you know it's effectively made that leap from just being a random collection of sounds to a song. So as I said, I woke up in the middle of the night and I remember when I was a kid playing around the transmitter building. See, we lived up on top of this mountain called Town Mountain in Hazard, Kentucky. And at the tip top of that mountain was a radio transmitter building and a radio tower for the AM station WKIC at the time where the broadcast signal went out. When the transmitter building was in operation, it would put off a buzzing sound because all of the equipment on the inside of that transmitter building, when it was working, made a sound. It was so I remember on a random Saturday, I had all my friends over and I told them to bring all their ninja garb over to my place. Uh, we were big into you know karate, martial arts and stuff growing up. And we were gonna make a movie. We're just gonna make a little script spontaneously and go out and try to shoot a VHS, you know, movie just for fun on a, a random Saturday. And so the movie took place around that transmitter building kind of up in the woods on the top of the mountain where I was raised. And so naturally captured onto the VHS tape was that buzzing sound. Well, it was a true labor of love, but I actually took the sound and spliced out all of the dialogue so that I just got a continuous block of that buzzing sound. I, by ear, figured out what root note that buzzing sound was resonating to. In this case, it was the uh, the root note of A sharp, but it was sharp of A sharp. It wasn't true A sharp. I then bounced it to my reel-to-reel -reel tape machine right here and then played it back at slow speed so it drops it by an octave which is half speed, and then bounce that back into my DAW. In fact, I'm going to take just a second now to let you hear what that buzzing sound sounded like. You have done well. You only reward reward me for this work. You have done well. Watch for intruders. So once it's back into my DAW, I kind of did a little tuning on it to, to put it very true to A sharp, spot on. And from there, I could use it like a drone to sing vocal parts on top of. And I don't know if you remember a few weeks ago, I posted a little video. I'm going to show that again right now. You can kind of hear how I'm using the ambient sound of the transmitter building taken off of a VHS tape from when I was a kid, using it as a drone to put vocal parts on. Those vocal parts, in some cases, get tr uh, translated from an audio file to MIDI, where I can use those MIDI files to assign to like analog synthesizers to play the melody parts that I'm essentially singing with my voice. I know that's like super nerdy, but it does have an effective end result. So again, because of the proximity to how closely we lived, my house was situated to that AM transmitter uh, and the tower, the radio tower, the signal was super, super hot. And I remember as a kid taking a bathtub, and if you listened very closely, you could hear the sound of the radio coming through the sink or the bathtub faucet. That's how hot the signal was, you know, based on how close we were to the, to the tower. And a lot of times when we would take VHS tapes inside our house, the signal just in the air, again, from the proximity, would bleed over onto the VHS tape, onto the audio of the VHS tape. So when we would put the tape into the VCR and rewind it and play it back, you would hear about 75% AM radio over top of 
whatever it was that you shot on VHS, which was kind of annoying at the time, obviously. But again, I got the idea to go back to those tapes and try to find some of those radio broadcasts and pull those off and use it within the context of this ambient album. So the example you're going to hear right now, a little sneak peek off this project, uh, I have, uh, it's tentatively titled The Voices in My Drain. Hope you enjoy. Sunday in Knott County. The funeral will be today at 11 a.m. Let your funeral home chapel, Elwood Cornet, ID back officiating. Reading Cemetery at Isom, the place of burial. Let your funeral home in Whitesburg in charge. And Evelyn Lane, 61, died Sunday at McNabb. The funeral will be today at 10 a.m. The cave of the Wakeman Baptist Church. And we'll have to ignore the voices in the background. There's no way to, to stop that. Project number two. So let's go back a couple of years. I wanted to do a follow-up sequel album to my Christmas project titled Nativity Fire, but I wanted this sequel album to focus on the themes of Pascha. Now, Pascha is the Eastern Christian word for Easter. It basically means the same thing as Easter. It's just a different word. It actually comes from a transliteration of the word uh, Passover in the Hebrew, which I think is like Pasa. But anyways, it basically, because the uh, crucifixion and the resurrection of our Lord took place over the Passover season, that word in the e in the Christian East traditionally got used to mean Easter. So the Pascha project is basically an Easter project where I'm taking songs, just like on the Christmas album, taking songs out of the Christian East, meaning Eastern Europe and the Mediterranean and Asia Minor and extending into the Middle East and having these ancient folk songs. These are non-liturgical songs. Uh, that have to do with the themes of the resurrection of our Lord. Well, actually, Great Lent, Holy Week, and the resurrection. Uh, taking these songs, having them translated into English, writing brand new arrangements that pay homage to the ancient versions, bringing in a team of people to sing and play. I'm singing and playing on it myself some, and then producing the whole thing. So it's a true labor of love. But of all the albums I've ever done, the Christmas Project, Nativity Fire, probably got the most response, and it was very gratifying to make that project, so that's what gave me the idea to want to do a sequel. And just like any good sequel, you've got to get some of the cast members back from the original project, or else it won't be a true sequel. So I'm going to get Father Tim back to do all of the uh, chanted uh, liturgical prayers that precede the the folk songs themselves. Hoping to get Dave Benson back and Pam Benson, who uh, they have submitted uh, tracks in the past. So definitely some local folks to come into my studio to track. But I'm also bringing on some new vocalists and some pickers, uh, musicians uh, for this project. From Brighton, England, Willow Eden is joining the team. Uh, she's an amazing soprano and uh, alto vocalist. Uh, she's got background in classical music as well as folk music, and she's already submitted some tracks, obviously working remotely with a lot of these folks. And from Israel, Nadav Isach is, uh, has submitted tracks for an instrument called a kanun. These instruments look a lot like a hammer dulcimer, but instead of striking the strings with mallets, you actually pluck the strings with metal finger picks. And they're played all over the Middle East, especially in Turkey, Greece, parts of the Mediterranean, North Africa, Egypt, a beautiful instrument. I've got 
Jeff Taylor on accordion, Ready Freddy Washington from the Los Angeles area is doing bass, and you can look up his like discography. He's done amazing studio work for like huge names across like thousands of albums. <laughs> uh, Ramon Stagarno on guitar from Peru, um, legendary percuss- percussionist Alex Acuna, and brand new on the team, Armenia Sarkisan uh, from Toronto, Canada. Uh, her parents and uh, her origins, just like her namesake, um, she's Armenian speaks Armenian fluently, and she has introduced me to um, several Armenian folk uh, Easter Pascha songs. But uh, here's a little sneak peek of of her voice, and and so you're going to hear how she's going to sound on this project. beautiful and haunting. So the very first song is nearing completion. It's a Serbian folk song that I started nearly two years ago. I actually started this whole Posca project back when the pandemic was first coming crashing down. I couldn't really have folks into my studio because of all the lockdowns, so this project went on hold. And then I thought to myself, what project could I work on that uh, where I could do it entirely working remotely with folks, remote collaboration? And uh, that's when I started working on my children's jazz album. But once that was completed, just now rolling back over to the Posca project. So I'm going to take just a second here so you can hear just a sneak peek of the Serbian song, Glory Be to You, O Lord. Descend ye angels, rise up ye people. In song we celebrate, let the universe cry out. On Pascha morning, Christ has awakened. Triumphing over death, glorious resurrection. Glory be to you, O Lord. Glory be to you, O Lord. For you have revived us. For you have restored us. So my goal is to select songs that are indicative of Great Lent and Holy Week. So those songs are going to be more reflective and somber compared to the very celebratory Pascha songs, which are going to be up-tempo and um, a huge pump-up, <laughs> like, like this first one here, uh, Glory Be to You, O Lord. Super excited about this project. Way more to come. It's obviously in its infancy. I've also been doing some music consulting. I have been doing mixing and mastering for um, some projects that aren't my own. So I've been, I've been, I've got a lot of irons in the fire, so so to speak. But I will try my best to do a better job at keeping you folks updated. Uh, Stay tuned for more music. Until then, this is Graham Sparkman with Graham Sparkman Music Production signing off. Hello. No one is available to take your call. Please leave a message after the tone. Hey, Graham, this is Dad. Just uh, wanted to let you know that I discovered a cassette tape in the pink chandelier room. Uh, it was in one of those Asian cabinet drawers close to where you and Warner used to keep your toys. I haven't listened to it, but it's got your handwriting on it. It's labeled Pink Crystals or something, and it's dated 1987. Probably something you recorded as a kid on your Fisher-Price tape recorder. Anyhow, I'm going to drop it in the mail. Don't know if you have a cassette player to listen to it on, but just thought you might want to have it. Hope you're doing well. Just give me a call whenever. Love you.